is like a melody that sweetly played in tune. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for joining us for the Action for Independence Buns Night. We're hoping you're going to have an awfully good Buns Night tonight, a couple of days after the event, but never mind. We're all looking for something to do in these times. We've got some great entertainment lined up for you. We've got some great speeches lined up for you. First person we're going to have playing for us tonight is somebody who I think needs very little introduction. Graham Brown, he's a musician, singer, songwriter and producer from Dundee. The Graham Brown Band was formed in 2013. It's played at numerous festivals and rallies in support of Scottish independence. So would you please welcome Mr. Graham Brown. Hello folks, my name is Graham Brown. I'm from the Graham Brown Band. You'll probably know me from songs such as I Can Hear the Nation, Watch Just Rise, The Lions Roar, and all these songs, Storm, uh, Kelly Cranky and all that. Thank you very much for uh, asking me on to the AFI Burns Night 2021. It's just a pity we couldn't do this on a proper gig, but hey-ho, with uh, the help of modern technology, we could do it like this. I'm going to give you a couple of songs, thanks. Jacobites by name, lend an ear, lend an ear. Ye Jacobites by name, lend an ear. Ye Jacobites by name, your faults I will proclaim, and your doctrines I'm on blame. You will hear, you will hear. Your doctrine, Simon, blame you will hear. Ye Jacobites, by name, lend an ear, lend an ear. Ye Jacobites, by name, lend an ear. Ye Jacobites, by name, your faults I will proclaim. Your doctrine, Simon, blame you will hear, you will hear. I'm on blame, you will hear What is right and what is wrong By the law, by the law What is right and what is wrong By the law What is right and what is wrong The weak are man is strong The short sword and the long Far to draw, far to draw The short sword and the long Far to draw, come on Jacobites by name, lend the near, lend the near. Ye Jacobites by name, lend the near. Ye Jacobites by name, your faults I will proclaim. Your doctrines I'm on blame. You will hear, you will hear. Your doctrines I'm on blame. You will hear. Come on, sing it. Ye Jacobites by name, lend the near, lend the near. Jacobites by name, lend the near. Ye Jacobites by name, your faults I will proclaim. Your doctrines I'm on blame. You will hear, you will hear. Your doctrines I'm on blame. You will hear. What makes heroic strife? Frame the far, frame the far. What makes heroic strife? Frame the far. What makes heroic strife? We was assassin's knife Or haunt a parent's life In bloody war, bloody war Or haunt a parent's life In bloody war Ye Jacobites by name Lend an ear, lend an ear Ye Jacobites by name Lend an ear Ye Jacobites by name Your faults I will 
proclaim your dog and I'm away. You will hear, you will hear your dog and I'm away. You will hear, come on. Ye Jacobites by name, lend an ear, lend an ear. Ye Jacobites by name, lend an ear. Ye Jacobites by name, your faults I will proclaim. Your dogs are Simon Blame. You will hear, you will hear. Your dogs are Simon Blame. You will hear, yeah. She Jacobites by name. Lend the near, lend the near. She Jacobites by name. Lend the near. She Jacobites by name. Your faults I will proclaim. That was Ye Jacobites by name. Okay, I'm just going to give this guitar just a wee tune. Right guys, it's only a couple of songs for me. I'm going to do this one for you. Uh, last song. I hope you've enjoyed the evening. Artists before me and after me. Uh, you've got a great line of artists. This is for the AFI. Burns Night 2021. Uh, please check out Graham Brown Band on Spotify, iTunes and all these places. We've got a website as well, www.grahambrownband.com. Uh, you can buy our CD there. We do a lot of songs for Scottish independence. You probably know us from the rallies and stuff anyway. Here we go, this is Kelly Cranky. Waar hee je been, se prolaat? Waar hee je been, se brankie, oh? Waar hee je been, se prolaat? Kom je bij Kelly Krankie, oh? En je hee been, waar hee je been? Je wat na been, se kante, I'd have I fought my auntie, oh, and I met the devil, hand on deep, on the brace, oh, Kelly Cranky, oh. And yet, what I have been, you would not be in sick auntie, oh, and yet, what I have seen, on the brace, oh, And the clever's got a swanky, oh. And I have fed on half the glen, and the real sad killy cranky, oh. Hey, what I hit him, you would not be sick and What's got you lie in the brush on the branky oh you'd better kiss King Lay's lift than come by Kelly Cranky oh I what I mean you would not be in second There's no shame, there's no shame, 
Thank you very much for being Graham Brown Band. You enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much, Graham Brown. That was absolutely brilliant. Set a high bar for everyone else to follow, but we, as I say, have quite a lot of entertainers lined up for you tonight. My name's Colin McPherson. I'll be your host for tonight for an Afi Good Burns Night. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, lots of you watching from all across Scotland, indeed all across Europe, Scott Ross, Joe Wallace, Anne Obilak, Kay McCall, Lynn Miller, Gail McAteer, Martin James Keatings, Brian Smith, William Smith, Margot Sagan, Tina Uniman, Cheryl Ashley, Paul McCutcheon, John Wilson, Craig Dempsey, Sandra Wallace, many, many more. So many, if I mentioned you all, we'd be here till tomorrow. But thank you all for joining us. Please engage with us in the chat. Um, if you're watching in some of the groups that we've shared the feed to, please go onto the Action for Independence account and share on the original chat because anything you chat on any other groups, I won't be able to see. So, what's the first thing we need in any bun supper? Of course, is the circuit grace. And we would like to now welcome the Reverend Edward Andrews, who likes to be known as Ed. He's a retired Church of Scotland minister, helping out in forests, an independentist and liberation theologian, the Reverend Ed Andrews. Let us pray. Some he meet and can he eat, and some would eat that want it. But we he meet and we can eat, and say the Lord be thanked. Amen. Thank you, the Reverend Ed Andrews. We're going to get back to Graham Brown now because not just known with the Graham Brown band, but also throughout lockdown, the Piper in the Hill in Dundee. He's a bra piper as well. Hope you're all hungry because Graham's going to pipe in the haggis. Okay, folk, I think I'm back on. I think the stream of the pipes got interrupted. I hope we're back on live. Uh, that's technology for you. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do about it. Um, I hope you caught most of what, uh, of Graham piping in a haggis. Would you please welcome on now Chris Sagan. He's an AFI supporter from Glasgow. First time that he's done anything like this, so he would ask us to be gentle. So, Chris, would you please address the haggis? Thanks so much, Colin. Thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be here this evening. I've got my whiskey. I've got my ski and do, which I'll make ready. And, I've, of course, I've got my haggis here ready to get started. So here we go. Address to the haggis. Fair for your honest sonsy face, great chieftain of the pudding race. I bring the ma, you tack your place. Pench, tripe, or firm. Will, are you worthy, O oh, a grace, as lang's my earn? 
the groaning trencher that you fill, your herd is like a distant hill, your pin would help to mend a mill in time of need, while through your pores the dews distill like amber bead. His knife, see rustic labour dicht, and cut you up, we're ready, slicht, trenching your gushing entrails bricht like ony ditch. And then, oh, what a glorious sicht, warm, reeking, rich. Ye pours that make mankind your care and dish them out their bill of fear. Old Scotland's wants nae skinking wear that droops and luggies, but gie her your grateful prayer. Gie her a haggis. Here's to haggis, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Thank you very much, Chris Sagan. Very kind of you. And I hope you're all getting hungry. <laughs> Slancha. Cheers, Colin. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. So if you've got your haggis, time to tuck in, folk. Enjoy. We're going to give you some more entertainment now. And we've got a musician. Some of you may already know her. Those of you who don't will get to know her now. Jeanette Hill. Jeanette is the lyrics writer for the Hill Stewart Songwriting Partnership a member of the Jaded Lilies Band, part of the John McLean 100 Collective of Artists that support bringing the great man's name to recognition, and has also written plays about immigration, waspy women, and the general effects of austerity politics. She worked as a teacher for 30 years, and after many years in Manchester, returned to Glasgow just in time to vote yes in the 2014 referendum. So would you please welcome Jeanette Hill. Hi folks, some songs for Burns Night. Um, first one he wrote in 1792, Slaves Will Men, after a few years after he had narrowly uh, missed um, having to go to um, a plantation uh, to work. I'm glad he did me. <laughs> it was in sweet Senegal that my foes did me and thrall for the lands of Virginia, Virginia, oh, torn from that lovely shore, I must never see it more, and alas, I am weary, weary, oh, torn from that lovely shore, and I'll never see it more, and alas, I am weary, weary, oh. All on that charming coast is no bitter snow or frost like the lands of Virginia, Virginia, oh. Their streams forever flow and flowers always grow. And alas, I am weary, weary, oh. Their streams forever flow and the flowers always grow. And alas, I am weary, weary, oh. The burden I must bear While the crew who scourge I fear In the lands of Virginia, Virginia, oh. And I think of friends most dear With a bitter, bitter tear and alas, I am weary, weary, oh. Yes, I think of friends most dear, with a bitter, bitter tear. And alas, I am weary, weary, oh. Ye banks and braes, oh, bonny doon. How can ye bloom, say fresh and fair? How can ye chant, ye little birds? And I say, weary, for care. 
you break my heart, ye warbling birds that wanton through the flowering thorn. Ye minds me, O oh, departed joy, departed ne'er to return. After I rode through Bonny Doon to see the rose and wood bind twain. An elk a love bird sang o oh, oh, its love and fondly say the die o mine light some heart I put a rose face sweet upon its thorny tree and my false lover he stole my rose but i he left the thorn and me I hope you all enjoyed that. Thanks very much, Jeanette Hill. Again, we've got lots of folk watching tonight. Thank you all for joining us. Please engage in the chat. Stephen Kelly, Tracy Smith, Angela Reed McNeil says, Hi, Uncle Chris. Hi, also to William Forbes, Marie Paul Felat, and Smart, uh, Jerry Graham, Pete Scully, and just going through comments, uh, Paul Donaldson is enjoying the entertainment and the McSween's haggis with neeps and tatties. Paul, I know you try to make us jealous, but it won't work. I've got my beer and I've got my whiskey and I've got my haggis ready to go after the show. Hi to Melon McCain and Elizabeth Healy. Anita King. Alison Clark is waiting on a Chinese. Well, you know, Alison, that's the multicultural Scotland we live in nowadays. You don't even have to have haggis and buns night. We can still celebrate the great man with a Chinese, with an Indian meal or whatever. That's the Scotland we're looking to build. Uh, Chris Egan says, cheers, Andrew. Great to be watching in Canada. So we really are going global now. That's really good to hear. Everyone else saying what they're having for their tea. Really good. Hi to Pete Russell, Jean Brown, Suzanne Nichols. And Aubrey Luck is on a wee malt whiskey night to celebrate as well. Cheers, on. Uh, Pete Scully has just addressed the chicken nuggets. Good on you, Pete. Uh, it's probably getting more sense out of them than the linesman or anybody else. But anyway, time to move on to our next, uh, ne next section of the show. Uh, would you please welcome Dave Thompson? Dave has been actively campaigning for independence since the 1960s before many of us were even alive. And he was first elected as an SNP MSP for the Highlands and Islands in 2007. It was at the 2007 count where Dave famously spotted the returning officer's error in his calculations and asked for a recalculation, which resulted in the SNP winning the last list seat in the region, the SNP being the largest party and going on to form the first pro-independence Scottish government. He then served as a constituents MSP for Sky, Lochaba and Breitnoch between 2011 and 2016. And today he is the interim leader of Action for Independence. So we would, would you all please welcome Dave Thompson with the immortal memory. Thank you, Colin. Uh, good evening, lads and lasses, loons and clines, and if you're from Stornoway, coves and blowns. What wonderful languages we have in Scotland. Our MC Colin uh, messaged me just a minute ago to ask if I was uh, ready to speak now. Or should we just let you go on enjoying yourselves for a wee while longer? You must have heard me speak before. In fact, the last time I did the immortal memory, I'd been speaking for only an hour when a guy at the back 
asked when I was going to finish, and then he threw an empty wine bottle at me. Fortunately, it missed me and hit the MC. As the MC was being helped up, he was asked if he was okay, and he said, No, no, I can still hear him. Hit me again. <laughs> of course, there's no danger of a bottle hitting me tonight, but I promise I won't keep you too long. Just the 50 minutes requested by Colin. What's that, Colin? 15, not 50. Oh, no. Well, it really is a pleasure and an honour to be asked to do the immortal memory at Affy's first ever burn supper. Affy is, of course, uh, short for Action for Independence, and our aim is to back the SNP in the constituencies and unify the smaller indie parties on the regional list, so that we max the yes to get a super majority of pro-independence MSPs into Holyrood on May the 6th. I'm very proud to have been asked to address you this evening at Affy's first burnt supper, but I believe I wasn't the first choice to do this immortal memory, and that I'm only here because my friend, the Justice Secretary Hamza Youssef, uh, can't make it. Hamza can't make it before because he's, uh, he's very busy, and he told us that he had too many parliamentary duties to take care of. He told us about the new criminal justice bill and the trouble he was having with drugs and alcohol. We told him that at his age he should just give them up. Of course, <coughs> politicians normally accept invitations to make speeches, no matter what the event, because, like actors I suspect, we're afraid that our next job will be our last. We politicians are very conscious that our job is to offend the smallest possible number of people at any one time, as our stock is low enough and we don't want to make it any worse. In fact, politicians are held in such low esteem these days that the post office had to recall its uh, latest series of stamps depicting well-known politicians because people didn't know which side to spit on. However, to the task in hand and something about Rabbi Burns. At this point, I would like to acknowledge that I have mined various books, articles and speeches by others in putting this immortal memory together. Rabbi was born on the 25th of January 1759 at Alloway in Ayrshire and died on the 21st of July 1796 at Dumfries, nearly 225 years ago. His life on the farm was uh, hard, early, uh, too early really for his growing undernourished body, he was at the plough and executing the aura work on a poor, undercapitalized farm. And that hard work was to have a lifelong impact on Burns. It was at this early stage of his life that Burns developed the first signs of the illness that was to trouble him until his death, <clears throat> a weakness of the heart that he was never able to escape. He laboured on Mount Oliphant and laboured on Loch Lee, where his father died, prematurely worn out and exhausted, when Burns was just 24 years of age. He, together with his brother Gilbert, then rented the farm of Moss Gale near Mochlin. But Moss Gale was doomed to failure. Not because Robert or Gilbert were bad farmers, but because they hadn't the necessary minimum of capital to work it economically. <clears throat> but, bros and bannock toil apart, Robbie Burns was a genius who expressed himself in poetry. As a poet, he could not be suppressed. As a poet, he triumphed. Burns was a 
natural speaker and enjoyed the crack and was an active member of the Turbolton Bachelors Club, which was more a debating society than a club, and discussions were held on everything that was happening in the local area and beyond. Guest speakers were invited and News of events in London and Edinburgh were always certain to provoke debate. Of course, <clears throat> we can't talk about Robbie Burns without talking about his relationship with women. The man who was Burns never lost an element of boyishness in his relations with women, and women would never have liked him as much as they did had he not liked them. He honoured women and their sex, and he proved it by publicly trumpeting his every liaison in charming lines, which have become as much a part of Scotland's literary heritage as, as they are of his own posterity. Burns marked his loves by enshrining them in matchless songs, <clears throat> and by so doing, he made his heroines as immortal as himself. There's much debate about Burns' morality, and, as a Christian, this intrigues me. I think, however, despite his many loves, that Burns actually believed in marriage and lifetime relationships, and every line of what some consider <coughs> the greatest of all his love songs shows it. John Anderson, my Jo John, when we were first acquaint, your locks were like the raven, your bonny brow was brent. But now your brow is belled, John, your locks are like the snow, but blessings on your frosty pow, John Anderson, my Jo. John Anderson, my Jo John, we clam the hill the gather, and mony a county day, John, We've had wi ain another. Now we man totter down, John, and han and han we'll go, and sleep together at the fit, John Anderson, my Joe. Burns also wrote a number of graces, and we have heard the Selkirk grace already tonight, but I would like to elaborate a bit on it. Here's how it goes again. A beer ge kutsch is kunach ge kaal. A krise kutsch is kunach ge beer. Ach, akinje, a beer ge slanch. Molag marsin a don tria. That wasn't Scots, of course, it was Gaelic. So here's the Scots version. Some he meet and canna eat, and some would eat that want it, but we he meet and we can eat. And say the Lord be thank it. Finally, <clears throat> an English translation for the true monoglots in the audience. Some have food and can't eat, and some would like to eat but have no food. But we have food, and we can eat, so thank the Lord. There you have it, the three languages of Scotland, this great and diverse nation of ours. All three languages deserve recognition and teaching in Scotland. It's been proven that bilingualism is good for development of the brain, so wouldn't trilingualism be so much better? During his life, <coughs> Burns didn't travel much outside Scotland, despite living in an age which included the Grand Tour through Europe as almost mandatory for every young gentleman coming out into his majority. To travel with a friend or one's tutor to Paris, Rome and Athens, and return by way of Spain or Portugal, before taking up a full social life in London or Bath, was the done thing in Burns' time, as his fellow countryman Boswell did. But for Burns... Edinburgh would serve happily as an Athens, Glasgow would be his London, Aberdeen his Rome, Inverness could be his Paris, Stirling his Lisbon, Perth his Madrid, and Dumfries would stand in rather neatly for Bath. 
apart from a <clears throat> marginal excursion into northern England, his would be a strictly Caledonian odyssey. After all, his interests were totally chauvinistic. He had said himself that he only wanted to see his native land, and I wonder what he would have made of us today on the verge of independence. I think he would have been proud that Scotland has practised a peaceful, democratic revolution in the cause of independence, and that we showed in 2014, through the Edinburgh Agreement, signed by an SNP First Minister and a Tory Prime Minister, that two countries can, without undue rancour and with respect, agree to go their own way, should that be the will of the people. Contrast that with the position of the current Tory, or should I say English nationalist, uh, government in London, the democracy-denying government, who refused to allow the people of Scotland the democratic right to vote for independence. Their day of reckoning is coming, however, and they will find out in May that they have been sent homeward to think again. Rabbi sang the songs of Scotland, and for all his bookish knowledge of the world and his great conversational skills, his muse still spoke with an Ayrshire accent. But what about his accent? What about the language Burns used for most of his poetry? The Scots language. We've heard a wee bit of it tonight, <clears throat> but fit as Scots. Well, Scots is the traditional Germanic language with the Northern Isles and Lowland Scotland, which stretches from the borders up the east coast to Caithness, including Murray, Faram Fay, and for its kent is Doric. And Satana was born in brocked up spiking, <coughs> but it was fair knocked out of my school, and a wheel mine being dealt off and skelped out of the fingers for using it. But far does Scots come for? Well, it come for a former Anglo Saxon that came into the southeast of its new Scotland around the seventh century. <coughs> It was brought down by the Angles, and of course, it's for English comes for you now. As Scots developed over the years, it's been influenced by many tongues. For instance, it now includes words like the French ashet, or serving plate, or douce, meaning quiet or respectable, and Latin words like domini for headmaster and Gaelic, wa Gaelic words like <coughs> loch for lake and glen or strath meaning narrow or wide valleys. Spey Valley is English, but Strath Spey is Scots and Gaelic. And there are Dutch words like loon meaning boy, a word well used in the northeast where I come from. I'm Philosi, so I'm a lossy loon. The diminutive is also used as in loony, so I suppose I'm a loony. But that doesn't mean I'm mad, just that I'm a wee loon. And there are lots of other lovely words, they're spoken and written. Words like greet, <coughs> as in cry, bonnie, as in pretty, gaji, as in someone from Dingwall, glaket, as in dopey. Chap, as in knock, mingin, much worse than not very nice, as in Tory. Garney, as in Victor Meldrew. Fusti, past its sell-by date, as in labour. Sonsi, as in plump. Sart, as in shirt. Sleeket, sly and not to be trusted, as in liberal democrat. Gallus as in brash, Peelywally as in pale, and ill-looking, Carabbit as in bad-tempered, and there are many, many more. 
As you can see, <clears throat> Scots is a bonny, expressive, rich and diverse language, and Robbie Burns has a great deal to do with the fact that it still exists at all. I'm near the end now, and I'll finish with a story about a Durick-speaking loon in Aberdeenshire. The loon was out walking when he decided to follow a beautiful burbling burn down the hill. He followed the burn for a while and came across some coos which were trampling, pooping and peeing in the barn. He shooed them off, but they soon came back, so he just left them. Further down the hill, he came across a man kneeling with his back to him and about to take a drink from the burn. He shouted at him, Stop, then I take a help of that. It's full of pee and cock. Which means, don't drink that. It's full of urine and faces. The man stopped and turned, and lo and behold, it was a Tory Toff. And he said to the loon, My man, don't you know you're on my land? And I don't like the tone of your voice. What did you say anyway? So the loon said, Put your hands together carefully and make sure you don't spill a drop. Well, I hope we hear the Scots language for a long time yet. So join my please and a toast to Scots and to Robbie Burns. Cheers, Robbie. The Immortal Memory of Robert Burns. Slancher. Thank you very much, Dave Thompson. I hope you are still all enjoying the show. We're a truly global show tonight. We've got folk watching in Canada. We've got folk watching in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Germany, and of course in Scotland. And I'm sure many other countries which maybe haven't outed themselves yet on the chat. But I think that just goes to show the global influence that Robert Burns has. Truly a great poet. Next up, we've got some music for you. Derek McPherson. Derek is AFI's head of communications and has been a musician since the age of eight. When you see him in a minute, that's a couple of years back. 20 years ago, he formed the Babelfish Project, which he describes as a band of indeterminate membership. On this occasion, it features, alongside Derek, his good friends, Annie Coyne and Mark Doherty. So please welcome Derek McPherson. Up 
Thank you, Derek McPherson and the Babelfish Project. I've got to give another few shout outs. Uh, the McPhersons of Annan are also watching. If I didn't mention them, uh, things might get a wee bit dodgy for me. Um, hi also to Linda Ross watching in Dumfries, making the point we are not all Tories here. Absolutely. But tonight isn't about politics. Tonight is about Robert Burns and further showing what a global show we have tonight. We also, of course, have Melanie McCain watching from Sweden and we also have Casey Hill watching from New Hampshire, USA. Apparently, folk in Australia are going to be joining very soon. We've just had a wee heads up and that. And again, one I think quite important point uh, for Stephen Kelly. Lots of indie troops have died in the past 12 months. 
let's get indie for them now. I think that's something that we really have to still keep at the back of our minds for tonight, but at the front of our minds when the show's over. Um, just a quick uh, shout out for everybody that's watching. If you're enjoying the show and you, the show's going to be finished in you know, maybe an hour from now, if you'd like to join in for a blether at the bar, which is something that obviously every bun supper needs once the show is over, just a wee social get together. We will be doing a blether at the bar tonight. We will be opening up this Zoom call to anybody who wants to come and join us after the live stream is finished. We will post the link here near the end of the show. So again, any of you watching, if you fancy coming in for a bit of a blether, bit of a get together, you are more than welcome. First up though, or next up is somebody again who really needs no introduction, Martin Keatings. Martin is from Dunfermline. He's the convener of the Forward as One group. And he has also been the person who has brought forward the recent People's Action on Section 30 legal case. So Martin, something a wee bit different for you tonight. Would you please propose a toast to the lassies? Good evening. Tonight I've been asked to give the toast to the lassies. The traditional portion of the Burns event which can be reduced to ripping the out of the ladies. With me tonight is my lovely assistant Sarah. I've been reliably informed that the term is editor, not lovely assistant. It should be no secret that uh, Rabbi Burns was a fan of the opposite sex and from that enthusiasm reflected in his writings was derived the toast to the lassies, which in early days of these events were male-only affairs. The ribbing of the fairer sex working in the hospitality industry and serving the food and drink. As we became more progressive and women began attending such events, it became a ribbing of the fairer sex who were in attendance. Many of you know me and the fact that my life is interspersed with disasters, so it should come as no surprise to you that I looked before I leaped in accepting this role. When I forgot about the fact that this is 2021 and we now live in a world where the word mansplaining is now part of modern vernacular. So yeah, this is going to end well. Not. <laughs> I'm constantly reminded that there are, of course, great differences between men and women, and those of the fairer sex are, of course, very different from our side of the fence. And since an early age, I've been scratching my head trying to work out why we're so different. I find myself pondering questions like, why do women always need to go to the lavatory in pairs? As there's some sort of secret bar in there operating a two-person lane priority system? Why do women spend three hours going to different shops only to return to the very first shop you saw the perfect item in? And why do you ladies always decline a dessert only to eye up ours and then proclaim, maybe I'll have just a little bit of yours before devouring it completely yourselves? I just suddenly realised it's probably the fact that we're incapable of deciphering the fairer sex that makes us so different. Now, while they can see right through us. Unfortunately, the factory decided not to supply us with an instruction manual, so we just have to wing it, like having to use a saw on IKEA furniture because the factory made uh, one length too long. Conscious of this, and the aforenoted vernacular, I set about putting together a small group to do some research into what sort of things would be off limits. I thought I'd make a few suggestions to these ladies and on my very first one I was met with the question What? I've been around long enough to know what what means. Uh, it doesn't mean they've suddenly gone deaf or misheard me. What it is is her giving me an opportunity to uh, perhaps change what I just said. So with this in mind I decided to simply ask what would be best to avoid. I've been told that I'm not allowed to tell jokes about women's mental state, including giving instructions to men on how you tell how she's feeling. Like, for instance, if she's cutting up your clothes, you know, she might possibly be annoyed. I've been told that PMS jokes are not 
funny. Period. I'm not allowed to make observations on the fact that when a woman says I'm okay, then I'm fine. But if she says I'm fine, then I'm not going to be okay. <laughs> And I'm reliably informed that I am to stay off the subject of Karen, including such classics as Can I See the Manager Karen? Tasered Karen? And of course, a mistaken case of identity Karen. Robert Burns knew a, a thing or two about women. In a period of just 11 years, he's known to have fathered at least 13 children by at least five different women and all without the help of Facebook. But the one thing that cannot be denied is that Ravi would not be where he is in the eyes of the world were it not for the women who surrounded him. They were for all intents and purposes his muse to each word he wrote. With the past year that's gone by being one of the most challenging in our country's history, evidenced by the fact that I'm speaking to you by way of the internet, and I haven't had a haircut for a year, rather than us being surrounded by the ladies giving me the evil eye in the same room. Uh, I think it's probably right and proper that the women should be put on a pedestal, but perhaps not in the same objectified manner that Rabbi would have aimed for. Because if there's one thing that the last year has taught us, it's that the better half of our nation have shown their might. The glass ceiling is beginning to crumble. From the carers attending to those in communities of which many more are women than men, both paid and unpaid, to the district nurses vaccinating our most vulnerable, to the doctors, the nurses, the auxiliaries, the porters, the domestic staff in our hospitals, tending to the weak, the sick and the vulnerable, under great pressure and great stress, but rising to the challenge. To the administrators and the secretaries, to the parliamentarians, to the executives, holding together our national infrastructure, our economy and our society, to the voice of reason and keeping the peace, to the mothers calming their children and to the daughters caring for their elders, to the engineers and the scientists bringing us advancements in technology, advances in medical intervention and the development of vaccines. Long may it continue that we strive for equality of the sexes, for the fairer sex brings to the mix pragmatism, calm, imagination and a newer, more modern way of thinking. And here's to the next generation of lassies, to bring that glass ceiling crashing down and to write the next chapter in our nation's history. So, I'd like everyone to please raise a toast to the lassies and all their glory. To the lassies. Thanks very much, Martin Keatings. And I saw that just about everybody that's watching the show tonight uh, really enjoyed what you had to say. Great speech, Mon. We wouldn't expect any more. Um, the reply from the lassies tonight, we would like to welcome Nancy McIver. Nancy is also from Dunfermline. And of course, Nancy also does know Martin. Nancy is a regular guest on the People's Doorstep Referendum International Chat Show. She was saying uh, when she was waiting to come on, oh, she's so nervous. She'd almost rather have another beer. In. Well, Nancy, uh, you've got five already. I mean, uh, another six. Uh, why not? I mean, up to you. Go for it. One thing that Nancy also does is she is a moderator for the Facebook group Indie 2 Cafe, which is a reach out page inviting people to come in for a blether. So again, um, that is something where maybe if you don't know it yet, you might quite like to enjoy it. So look, at, look it up on Facebook and they do recipes, just a wee blether when we're on lockdown, something really, really good. And Nancy, Martin's toast to the lassies, here's your reply. Wow, so obviously great thanks, big thanks are, are due to Martin um, for his speech to the lassies. Um, so I expect that everybody here, including myself, 
um, has been to enough burn suppers to know that it now falls to me as tonight's token lass to lower the tone a little and poke some gentle fun at the lads. I think we realise that Robert Burns in many ways was a lad typical of his time. He loved the fairer sex and appreciated their beauty. He wrote about Bonnie Pegg. Her ears she sweet and shape complete, we nay proportion wanton. The queen of love did never move, we motion mere enchanting. So yes, a lad typical of his time or a typical lad of any time. Burns appreciated the fairer sex and attributed much of his inspiration to them. He credits lassies with his first forays in verse. He writes in his first commonplace book, which is a kind of diary, I believe. For my own part, I never had the least thought or inclination of turning poet till I got heartily in love. And then rhyme and song were, in a manner, the spontaneous language of my heart. So he loved the lassies and he loved the company of lassies and it's obvious that Burns' amours were many and various. So lassies, if you are called Anna, Alison, Katie, Mary, Jeannie, Cloris, Clarinda, Nancy, no comment, <laughs> there is a poem about you or to you. It's often said that Burns was an advocate for women's rights. Indeed, he wrote a poem in which he states, the rights of women merit some attention. These rights are, unsurprisingly, not equal pay and opportunities, nor the right to vote, but the right to protection, decorum, adoration, and independence. So a typical lad then knows on which side his bread's buttered. And yet I wonder, is there a typical lad after all not every lad needs to buy an, an electric lawnmower. Some of them can find their own way home. If you didn't get it, I didn't at first either, but if you just think about it. Um, yes, lads are all very different, as another of Burns' short poems illustrates very clearly. Twa bonny lads were Sandy and Jockey. Jockey was loved, but Sandy unlucky. Jockey was laird both of hills and valleys but Sandy was not but the king of good fellows. Jockey loved Maggie, for Maggie had money, and Sandy loved Mary, for Mary was bonny. In wedded for love, in wedded for treasure, so Jockey had siller, and Sandy had pleasure. So lads, what one would you choose? So lassies, you know, you must confess that for all these faults, I cannot think of anything but good of the lad who writes, Husband, husband, cease your strife, nor longer idly rave, sir. Though I am your wedded wife, yet I am not your slave, sir. So lassies, if you will be upstanding with me, here's a toast to our lads in the bard's own words. Good speed and further to you, Johnny. Good health, hail hands and weather bonny. Now, for those of you that know me, I don't drink, but I've got a rather national drink. So here's the toast to the laddies. To you, boys. Thank you, Nancy. Sludger. Yeah, that was great, Nancy. Thanks very much. Very, very much appreciate that you came in and joined us tonight. And what I can see in the comments Folk crew enjoying it, so thanks very much. Thank you. We're going to carry on with some musical entertainment now. And next up is going to be Elaine Allison Walls, who is a mum, a, prof a professional musician and an entrepreneur. She started Well Happy, a health and well-being business in 2014 with her best friend Janine. Well Happy teaches schools, charities, businesses, groups, and individuals. The science of happiness through interactive and fun workshops. <laughs> Excuse me. They provide tools to help improve resilience and decrease stress in everyday life. I think something that we all need right now more than anything else. 
Elaine is also the leader of the Well Happy Band, which tours all over the country, including main stages at festivals, corporate gigs, community gatherings, and everything in between. Elaine promotes a well happy life, which everyone can achieve with the right mindset and tools. So please welcome Elaine Wells. Hi everybody, it's Elaine from Well Happy. I hope you're having a lovely night. My first song is going to be Ranting Roven Robin, which is an autobiographical song which celebrates Burns' 28th birthday. Now, my birthday was also on Burns' night, but I certainly wasn't 28. <laughs> so I got this as a birthday present, so I'll be playing this for you. Okay, this is Ranting Roven Robin. <laughs> There was a lad was born in Kyle, but what in a day, or oh, what in a style, I do tell it's hardly worth the while to be so nice with Robin. Robin was a Robin boy, a ranting Robin, ranting Robin. Robin was a Robin boy, a ranting Robin, Robin. Our monarch's hind must year but ain was five and twenty years begun. Twas when a blast of Janwar when blew Hansel in on Robin. Robin was a Robin boy, a ranting Robin, ranting Robin. Robin was a Robin boy, ranting Robin, Robin. The gossip key kit and his loof, quash all our lives will see the proof. His wily boy will be Nick Coof, I think we'll call him Robin. Robin was a roving boy, a ranting Robin, ranting Robin. Robin was a roving boy, a ranting Robin, Robin. He'll hear his fortunes great and small, but I a heart of boon them all. He'll be a credit to us all, we'll be so proud of Robin. Robin was a roving boy, a ranting roving, ranting roving. Robin was a roving boy, a ranting roving, Robin. But sure as three times three make nine, I see by ilk a score and line, the chapel dearly like our kind, so leaves me on the robin. Robin was a roving boy, a ranting robin, ranting robin. Robin was a roving boy, a ranting robin, robin. Good faith for show I do chigar, the bonny lasses lie as far, but twenty fourth she may have bore, so blessings on the robin. Robin was a roving boy, a ranting robin, ranting robin. Robin was a roving boy, a ranting robin, robin. The second song I'd like to play for you tonight is My Love is Like a Red Red Rose. Thousand miles, my dear, though it 
thousand miles, I will come to you again, Lord, where ten thousand miles. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope you have an awesome night and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Keep smiling and be well happy. Thanks very much, Elaine. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And again, thank you, all of you watching us on the Facebook live stream. I think we're having a great night and there's still a wee bit more to come. So stay tuned. But of course, tonight is all about Rabbi Burns. And so would you now please welcome Fiona McKinnon, who said herself, she doesn't want any great introduction. She just wants to recite a wee poem for Rabbi Barnes. So please welcome Fiona McKinnon. We sleek it, cowren, timorous beastie. Oh, but a panics in thy breastie. Thou needn't start a wasy hasty with bickering brattle. I would be laced to run and chase thee with murdering paddle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes thee startle at me, my poor earthborn companion and fellow mortal. I doubt no whiles but thou may thieve. What then, poor beastie, thou mon live? A demon acre in a thrave a small request. I'll get a blessing with a laugh and never missed it. Thy wee bit icy too in ruin, that silly was the winds are strewn, and Nathan knew it to big a new innie of foggy's green, and bleak December's winds ensuing be snail and keen. Thou saw the fields lay bearing blast, and weary winter coming fast, and cosy here beneath the blast. They thought to dwell, till crash, the cruel culture passed out through thy cell. That wee bit heap o' leaves and stubble has caused thee mony a weary nibble. Now thou's turned out for all thy trouble, but house are hobbled. To thaw the winter's sleety dribble and crenach cold. But Maisie, thou art no thy leave, and proven foresight may be vain. The best laid schemes o' mice and men gang out eagerly, and leaves us naught but grief and pain for promised joy. Still, thou art blessed compared with me, the present only touches thee, but och, I backward cast my e when prospects dear, and forward, though I canna see, I guess in fear. Thank you, Fiona. A wee Burns poem. What more could you ask for? Well, you could ask for another wee Burns poem. So we'd like to welcome Margo Sagan, Chris Sagan's wife, who also says, I've never done anything like this before. So please go easy on me. So welcome, Margo. Give us a poem. Hi. <laughs> Hiya. Okay, this is a wee poem by, um, it's called To a Louse, and I think it was written around about 1786, and Rabbi Burns was in the church, and in the church was Miss Dalrymple. Now, Miss Dalrymple was the local beauty, and she thought she was just absolutely gorgeous, sitting there with her lace bonnet on. But little did she know, there was a louse running through her lace bonnet. So he penned this poem. How where are you going, you crowling fairly? Your impudence protects you sairly. I canna say, but you run strung rarely o'er gauze and lace. Though faith, I fear you dine but sparely on sick a place. You ugly, creeping, blasted winner, detested, shunned by saint and sinner. How dare you put your fit upon, say fine a lady. Gay somewhere else and seek your dinner on some poor body. 
Oh, Jenny, didn't you toss your heat and set your beauties all abreed? You little ken what cursed speed the blast is making. The winks and finger ends I dread are notice taken. Oh, with the power, the gift to give us, to see ourselves as others see us, it would be many a blunder free us and foolish notion. What airs and dress and gait would lead us and even devotion. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Margot Segan. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, folk, uh, we are now going to go to another wee Burns in a different artistic way. Again, big thanks to Ariel Killick for providing us with this video from, I think it was the Perth Burns celebration in 2020. So please welcome another video about Robert Burns. Bonnie Lassie, will you go, will you go, will you go, Bonnie Lassie, will you go to the box of Aberfeldy? Bonnie Lassie, will you go, will you go, will you go, Bonnie Lassie, will you go to the box of Aberfeldy? Uh, next musician needs no introduction, Pete Scully. Originally from Glasgow, now in Lanark. He spent just over a decade in musical theatre learning the trade and decided to give it a bash out on his own. And as Pete has always believed in Scottish independence, he started to perform at Hope Over Fear, loads of other events over the length and breadth of the country. Now, I am actually quite interested in what we're going to hear right now because I have never heard Pete Scully singing a song for Rabbi Burns so he might surprise us who knows who might sing a song about a wheelbarrow we'll see ladies and gentlemen please welcome Pete Scully Hi there, Pete Scally here, and welcome to Lanark for my part of your virtual burn supper. I'm going to do a couple of tracks for you. This is your rocking Scottish rebel segment of the show. <laughs> Hope you enjoy. I don't know if you can see the changes that have come over me. These last few days I've been afraid. That I might drift away So I've been telling old stories Singing songs That make me think about where I came from And that's the reason Why I seem so far away today Let me tell you that I love you That I think about you all the time
So I'm steady thinking, my way is clear And I know what I will do tomorrow When the hands are still and the kisses flow I will disappear And let me tell you that I love you That I think about you all the time enjoyed that one I'm going to do one more for you and then move you on to whoever's next I'm not, very, I'm not quite sure uh, but I hope you're enjoying your evening and if you are then you can come and see my live streams as well on a Saturday night uh, I've checked out my YouTube channel Pete Scally Music and I'm going to do one more for you before I leave you <laughs> This is a rocket Scottish rebel. Too easy, don't like it. This flag I wear. Or is this a crazy? Because I comb my hair. I wanna free my country, but I'm gonna do it my way. I'm gonna rock, gonna roll, gonna do it almost every day. Oh yeah, I'm a Scottish rebel. From here to toe. But we gotta keep it rocking. Yeah. Like me, been waiting on freedom. I've been waiting too long, but the time is over. That's why I'm singing that song. All under one banner, hope over fear, man. And forward as one, we're marching all over this land. Oh, yeah, I'm a Scottish rebel from head to toe. Cheers. Good night. Thank you, Pete Scully. Well, Pete, I know you're watching tonight, and I know that I said I don't think you can do burns. You know, Pete, I think you might have just proven the point, but it's still great what you're doing. And thanks for joining us tonight for the entertainment. I really enjoyed that. So, folk, what we're going to do again, remember afterwards, once the show is finished, we will have a wee blether at the bar. 
and I'll post the link onto, or somebody else will post the link onto the AFI chat so you can all come and join us and we can all have a wee blether, a wee drink, uh, your choice, whether it's Nancy Zion Brew, a Ma Whiskey, or whatever, please feel free to come and join us. But of course, one thing that we really do need tonight is a toast to Scotland. And so please welcome back Derek McPherson. Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, it's good to be with you. Um, 707 years ago this year, Scotland saw a great battle which re-established her independence, which was already in its fifth century even then. Uh, it was the culmination of a long struggle which had consumed the better part of three decades following the untimely demise of Alexander III. It had seemed that for much of that time that the task might be an insurmountable one. We faced what was probably the greatest military machine in the world at that time, and initially we also faced a king who had the reputation for being as brilliant in strategy as he was ruthless in execution. And yet we Scots continued to resist and struggle for our freedom. At first, we were quite unused to such travails as the reign of Alexander III had been an unusually peaceful and prosperous time for Scotland. But we did so with increasing confidence and determination. We saw the great rebellions of Wallace and Moray and the emergence of Robert Bruce as not only our Plan B king, but more importantly, as a popular resistance leader. During his time, he saw off Edward I by the simple expedient of outliving him and proved himself every bit Edward's equal, at least as a strategist, and he continued to build that resistance. At Bannockburn, he led a people's army against Edward II, the son of the first of that name who had invaded our land, and he firmly established himself as our greatest military leader and was also described uh, by the Holy Roman Emperor as one of the three greatest knights in Christendom. Six years later, he consolidated his place as our greatest military, uh, greatest political leader, rather, um, by signing a declaration. A declaration that was to resound down the years and inspired Thomas Jefferson as he wrote the US Declaration of Independence in uh, the 1770s. So four and a half centuries plus after uh, the, the original Declaration of our Bruce, of which I'm speaking. Now, um, Bruce was a great inspiration, of course, to Robert Burns. And there was something about that declaration that I think should inspire all of us. It was um, the first historical recorded example of a, um, a recall provision and also the first recorded example of an expression of the sovereignty of the people over the monarch. Um, it stated quite clearly that there were circumstances in which um, the Scottish people reserved the right to remove any king or sovereign and replace them with somebody else if they weren't um, doing what we wanted them to do. And the one thing at that point in 1320 that we wanted them to do more than anything else was never again to allow us to become uh, subjected to our neighbours to the south. It says, if I remember it correctly, but if this, this prince shall depart from these principles he has so nobly pursued and consent that we of our kingdom be subjected to the king or people of England, then we shall immediately endeavour to expel him as our enemy and the subverter of both his own and our rights and shall make ourselves another king who will defend our liberties. 
And it goes on to say in ringing tones, so long as there shall be but 100 of us remain alive, we shall never give consent to the dominion of the English. Now, you hear a lot of talk these days about, uh, about oh, but you said um, once in a generation. Well, you know, if you really could make these, these decisions and bind the people of the future, then perhaps that is the one that we ought to all feel bound by. We shall never. But when Robert Burns came to learn of these events uh, in, the, in the late 18th century, later again, um, he was very much inspired by them because Burns was someone who, who loved passionately. He, he loved poetry, he loved song, he loved women, and more than anything else, perhaps, he loved his country. And he was inspired to write a song, which I'm going to play for you after, the, after we, we drink to, to the, the country that he loves so much. Uh, he wrote what was essentially a speech. So if our greatest ever military and political leader could have had a speech written for him by our greatest poet... Wouldn't that have been a wonderful thing? Well, it happened, and uh, and I'm going to play it for you tonight. But first, before I do, I think it's only appropriate that I um, ask you to charge your glasses and be upstanding for a toast to loyal Bruce and Wallace, as Burns put it, to Burns himself, to freedom, and to Scotland. <clears throat> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we were going to have a little bit of a <clears throat> short break here where Colin was going to talk for a minute or, or play a short video or something, but due to the technical issues that we've had, that's now not going to happen. So what I'm going to have to do is just keep talking for a minute or so while I make a few small adjustments so that I can do the song. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring this microphone in a little bit closer. There we go. I should do the trick. <clears throat> And so, if I can ask you once again to be upstanding, you don't have to really, it's just a traditional thing to say, for the national anthem, or at least what I think should be the national anthem. Uh, Robert Bruce's March to Bannockburn, as Burns titled it, or as it's better known, Scots were hey. We Wallace bled Scott swam Bruce The zap and wet Welcome to Your gory bed For the victory Now's the day And now's the hour See the front of battle run. See he approach the hood Edward's power, chains and slavery. What can be the trades of me? What can foul 
a cow's grave. Why say base was me a slave? Let them come and bleed. Why for Scotland's king and law, freedom saw was strongly drawn. Free man stand or free man fall, let them on with me. By oppressions, woes, and pains, by your sons and servile chains, we shall drink her dearest pains, but they shall be free. Lay the prejudice up for slow. Tyrants fall in every fold. Liberties and every bow. Let us do a deed. Start swahe. With all the sweat, Scott slumbers, the soft and wet. Welcome to your glory bed, for the victory. Great speech, great song, and something that we really need to hear a lot more often in the coming days and months. Well, folk, we are coming to the end of our show for tonight. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you to everybody who has taken part. We've got another musical treat for you tonight. And that is Mr. Hugh J. Stewart. Hugh is an acoustic multi-musician and singer from Glasgow. He loves all kinds of music, especially Celtic rock music and traditional Scottish songs, and normally performs with both Celtic Highway and the Jaded Lilies in and around the Glasgow area. Hugh began recording at home last year and tries to release a new track each month that matches the energy and sound of live gigs. So for our final musical act for tonight. Would you please welcome Hugh J. Stewart. Mark 
this duke and all that an honest man upon his bed could faith he mon of all that for all that and all that the dignities and all that the pith of sense and pride of
Thank you very much, Hugh Stewart. Well, folk, that's us come to the end of our Afi Good Bun Supper. Thank you all for joining us. But of course, we couldn't let the evening end without a vote of thanks to everybody who has helped make this event come together. And going on the comments on the Facebook feed, you've enjoyed it. And that is really good. So big thanks, of course, to Graham Brown, the Reverend Edward Andrews, Chris Sagan, Jeanette Hill, Dave Thompson, Derek McPherson, Martin Keatings, Nancy McIver, Elaine Walls, Fiona McKinnon, Margot Sagan, Pete Scally, Hugh Stewart. The biggest votes of thanks tonight go out to Paul Donaldson, who has been working day and night for the last month or so to make this event come together. So, Paul, a big thanks to you and an even bigger, if that's possible, vote of thanks to my good friend Ryman Dykstra in The Hague, who has been a producer tonight and has helped. No, he's just, he's not just helped. He has made this event come together. So, Ryman, thank you so much for your help. Really good. Of course, a big thanks to all of you watching. And if you're not ready to go to bed quite yet, we're going to have a blether in the bar. The Zoom meeting link is pinned in the comments. So it's easy for you to find if you're in Zoom. We will let you all in. So come and join us. Let's have a wee blur at the bar afterwards. But for night, for the night, that was the Affy Good Buns night. I'm Colin McPherson. Thank you all for joining us.